Check it out for the third day in a row. We've been seeing a funnel cloud here in the inland northwest. This one was spotted near Post Falls and Rathrum today. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. We're going to get more to the weather here in just a few minutes. But Mark, obviously a big day here in Spokane County. We can now officially reapply for phase two of reopening. So what do we know now about kind of the guidelines and what it's going to look like as we move forward? Well, we are learning more about what those guidelines lines look like and how to get there. The answer the second time will come very, very quickly, so I'm anticipating it will be in time for Memorial Day weekend. Spokane County now awaiting to see if we can move on to phase two. The Spokane County Board of Commissioners signed a letter yesterday asking state officials to allow the move. And as you heard, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward optimistic, saying we could possibly see businesses reopen by this weekend. So what exactly would happen in phase two? Here's how it breaks down. Under phase two, all outdoor recreation involving five people or fewer from outside of your house is allowed. That does include camping and beaches. That being said, state parks do remain closed to camping. Here's what the guidance says about gatherings. You can gather now with no more than five people outside of your household per week. Basically, the state is asking you to keep the circle of people you interact with small. Bottom line, still no big gatherings. Travel restrictions go from only essential travel under phase one to limited non-essential travel within proximity of your home. That language is really vague, but it seems clear the state is asking you to remain at home whenever you can. The list of businesses and industries that can resume in some capacity under phase two is pretty long. Let's touch on a few big ones, starting with retail. Retail stores can open at 30% capacity and must follow social distancing guidelines inside stores. Hair and nail salons can also reopen at 50% capacity, but the state asks that you call or text when you arrive and then wait outside until being told to enter and bring a face covering too, they say. Restaurants can reopen at 50% capacity with no more than five people at a table. And finally, one of the industries not originally on the list for phase two, but now appears to be is gyms, at least some of them. Under new guidance issued just yesterday, it appears that appointment only, one-on-one -on -one personal training, and small group fitness sessions of five people or fewer will be allowed if those gyms follow strict protocols. Again, it is now up to the state to decide if Spokane County can move on to phase two. We'll certainly keep you posted just as soon as that decision is made. And for a more thorough breakdown of what businesses and industries can resume under phase two, just text the word reopen to 509-448-2000. Spokane health leaders are once again urging people to wear masks. Yeah, basically they want you to wear a mask anytime you're in an indoor public space to try and control the spread of this coronavirus. Now today, the Spokane Public Health Officer, Dr. Bob Lutz, said a directive for face coverings goes into effect today. That's to help curb the spread of COVID-19. He says wearing a mask is strongly recommended, but not enforceable. Health officials are also asking local businesses to, to post signage, encouraging people to wear a mask. Although early on in COVID-19, the messaging around masks was such that they really weren't that useful, science has changed, the information has changed. And again, this protects me from, protect, from actually protects you from me. Health leaders say people need to continue to practice social distancing and proper hygiene, even as we start to reopen. And Governor Jay Inslee is asking the federal government to extend the time for the National Guard to help with contact tracing in this fight. This comes after the Trump administration said it's now planning to end deployments in late June, right before members would qualify for federal benefits. Inslee says the National Guard has been instrumental in contact tracing and is now asking the federal government to extend their time to continue working. The State Department of Health deployed more than 700 National Guard members to help with contact tracing. We'd heard uh, uh, comments that that the guards would be taken off of federal duty uh, on Jan June 24th, and we're going to need them a lot longer than that. And we are going to be quite vocal with, uh, I know, governors, Republican and Democrat across the country who want to keep our guard on duty. 
The governor says if the soldiers were to leave now, the state would have to train hundreds of people again, and they wouldn't be able to get the educational or retirement benefits. In the meantime, the state's unemployment rate has hit a new high, a high that we haven't actually seen in decades. So the April rate actually reached 15.4% as the state lost more than half a million jobs. The March jobless rate was 5.1%. Officials warned the April rate would reflect the widespread closings of restaurants and other businesses which started back in March. The previous record was set in November of 1982 when the state unemployment rate hit 12.2%. So it kind of alerted me. I thought that was strange because we don't have very many employees here. Now coming up tonight at five issues surrounding unemployment fraud increasing right here in Spokane. So we're taking a look at who is being targeted and what you can do to watch out for and protect your identity. And Mark, as this pandemic continues, we're seeing a lot more events and summer just main events is continuing to be canceled. That's exactly right, Whitney, with concerts at the Gorge Amphitheater postponed, leaders in Grant County fear that local revenues could take a big hit. In fact, the county's treasurer says a loss of concerts this year at the popular venue could result in a tax loss of more than a million dollars. Grand 2's Taylor Vito spoke with Grant County's tourism office as to how they are bracing for the potential losses. For concert goers, it's the sweet sound of music, culture, and good vibes at the Gorge that bring thousands and thousands of people each year to the rural venue in central Washington. And for some Grant County locals, it normally represents a welcome influx of cash to the area. But following the coronavirus pandemic, the Gorge's concert season will look much different this year. It's, it's disappointing, but you know, you have to accept it and do the best you can. So far, some big name shows and festivals have postponed to next year. Included in that, the popular Dave Matthews Band weekend, Chris Stapleton and Fish. We were pleased to have probably the best year we've ever had. And the Gorge's impact is huge. For example, according to a 2014 report from the Gorge's owners, the iconic amphitheater brought in over 380,000 concert goers in 2013, and concert goers spend money in local establishments, hotels, and campsites, the county says. Grant County's treasurer tells Krem that the county could potentially be looking at over $1.3 million in lost admission tax this year alone. And then there's the impact on the county's tourism budget. It traditionally benefits from taxes collected on hotel stays and campsites tied to gorge weekends. It, it can be monstrous. It, it can be as much as 30, 31, 32 percent of the taxes raised that we use for promotion. Of course, don't forget local business owners, too, and sales taxes. Just recently, this brand new hotel was being built in the town of George, just over six miles away from the venue, to presumably capitalize on people making pilgrimages to the gorge. If the COVID-19 uh, had not happened, we probably would have set all kinds of attendance records at the gorge this year. Grant County's tourism office says while they're bracing for impacts, they are looking at a potential silver lining. The sun will shine on all of us again. The county's rolling out these TV spots in Western Washington later this week. They're betting that more people won't fly this summer and will instead vacation closer to home. When the all clear is given, we're, we're going to be first on the list. While some Gorge concerts have been postponed to next year, it is important to note that other shows and festivals are still scheduled for now this year. Taylor Vito, Graham T News. Well, in other news, the Kendall Yards Night Market canceled tonight due to wet weather. The night market was set to open for the first event of the season today. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, several restrictions were in place to provide social distancing and limit attendees. Organizers say the event is scheduled for next Wednesday. All right, now to weather a gray, soggy Wednesday across the region. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining us now. Thomas, my first inclination is to kind of complain about the rain, but after all, it is a good thing, right? Yeah, I always wanted to put a positive spin, even on this kind of weather. Rain in spring is a really good thing, and we were actually commenting how the grass and the trees downtown just look greener than ever. So yeah, let's just take one day of some nice rainfall and know that that's going to help us and uh, help any kind of dry or drought situation for the days and maybe even months to come here. So yeah, a soaker of a day today with that steady rainfall still falling and let's face it, it's pretty much just going to be an all day event for us. It even looks like there's a little heavy batch that's coming out of Coeur d'Alene and moving west towards Spokane. So it looks like that rain's going to pick up over the valley and into downtown within the next few minutes here. All 
Also off down to the uh, south towards southeastern Washington, Pomeroy, La Crosse, Dayton, picking up some very heavy rain and that's staying consistent as well as it moves into the foothills. In fact, our latest Doppler radar estimates anywhere between an inch and an inch and a half of rain and still raining. So we are still under a flood watch for a portion of the inland northwest, and I do think these areas close to the Palouse and towards Pomeroy are probably at most risk, especially with the latest Doppler radar trends. So this is going to continue for the rest of the day today and coming up deep telling how much more rain is in the forecast and when this batch is coming to an end, plus your Memorial Day weekend forecast. Lots to cover all coming up in just a few minutes. Looking forward to all that, Thomas. Thank you very much. And looking ahead, nearly 400,000 people requested absentee ballots in Idaho for the state primary. This is the first time voting in Idaho is being done by mail, and it's all due to the coronavirus. Idaho Secretary of State's office, they're stressing voters need to return their ballots on time. Absentee ballots are due back at local clerk's offices by 8 p.m. on June 2nd. Still ahead tonight, quarantine is making many people consider a career change. From business owners to employees, why the pandemic seems to be maybe a perfect time to consider a career change. And before we head to the break, I want to give a senior shout out to Alisco, Alyssa Rodriguez. She is a senior at Meade High School. Her family says Alyssa will be attending Western Washington University in the fall to study education. We love giving our seniors a shout out, so keep sending in those submissions. Graduation quickly approaching. Just text 2020 to 509 448 and we'll send you the submission link. Congratulations, Alyssa.